Before we get started, a huge thank you to ESR for sponsoring this video. ESR just dropped three brand new wireless chargers that I am pumped about. This is their 25 watt three in one charger, perfect for charging your phone, watch, and AirPods. They've also got this insane 100 watt six in one charger, which on top of your phone, watch, and AirPods, you can also power your MacBook, iPad, and one other accessory. And finally, this 15 watt car charger, which has a really strong magnet. All of these chargers have official Apple MagSafe and Apple Watch certifications and ESR's CryoBoost technology, which keeps your phone nice and cool while charging to optimize for battery health and charging speeds. I also am a big fan of the design of these products. They look super clean, super minimal, and feel premium as well. ESR is also planning on releasing a bunch of new Qi 2 chargers in the next coming months which will come in at an even more affordable price. So if you're interested in any of these chargers, links will be down below and a huge thank you to ESR for sponsoring this video. What's up, Josh here, and welcome to day two of my CES coverage. Today, we're in a completely different building that is more focused on mainstream tech. And the one thing that I noticed more than anything on the showroom floor was cars. Tons of new electric vehicles in different shapes and sizes, some small, some big and some really big. But the one trend that I sort of picked up on almost immediately in all of these cars was LiDAR. On the Sony Afila, Sony's brand new electric vehicle, you'll see this little hood scoop looking thing on the roof of the car. That is a LiDAR sensor. Also on the Lucid Air, can you spot it? It's right there. And in this race to full autonomy and advanced driver assistance systems, it seems like LiDAR is the future moving forward. Well, maybe except for Tesla and Elon. We'll talk about that too. But yeah, in recent years, LiDAR has gotten smaller, cheaper, more advanced, and we're now starting to see it make its way into consumer vehicles. So join me in my quest to learn as much as I can about LiDAR in a day, starting with the basics. What does it stand for and how does it work? LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. It's a perception solution. We can detect range very precisely. You're sending a laser beam out of the sensor. It hits an object and bounces back. That light goes out, it hits something, maybe a, a person or a car reflects back to the system. And then you use the principle of the speed of light to divide by two and you know how far away that object is. Okay, sounds simple enough. Now, obviously LiDAR isn't the only sensor out there. There's also cars with radar, RGB cameras. So what are the pros of using LiDAR over these other sensors? Cameras are really good at resolution, very bad at sensing depth. The only way to sense something is, what is it is it bigger or smaller, right? But you don't actually know how far away it is. Radars can help with that, but they don't have good resolution. LiDAR is the most sophisticated sensor on the vehicle and it really captures that sweet spot. Okay, so LiDAR senses depth and has better resolution than radar, which mostly sees blobs. Cameras, on the other hand, can see color, which is important for things like recognizing stoplights and are also more detailed. Each sensor has its pros and cons, which is why in most cases, you won't ever see just one type of sensor on the vehicle. This is why we talk about sensor fusion, right? There's never gonna be a car that just has a LiDAR sensor on it. It's gonna be a combination of camera, radar, LiDAR, ultrasonic, and potentially even thermal. Well, redundancy is great in general for autonomous vehicles in case uh, something bad happens, like a bad measurement from one, when the sensors goes down, the overall vehicle will suddenly crash. That's Brian. We'll get back to him in a second. So as I'm learning more about the advantages of LiDAR, I keep thinking back to Tesla. Tesla is a unique case where they've gone completely away with time of flight sensors like radar and LiDAR, and Elon seems to believe in Tesla vision which is a completely camera-based system. And to me, it's super impressive how far they've come on this purely vision-based system. Now, I did learn of one specific scenario in which both LiDAR and cameras aren't great, and that is in rain, snow, or fog. In these scenarios, cameras can become blocked and the lasers from LiDAR start bouncing off of all the rain, snow, and fog in the air, which results in bad readings. This is where thermal comes into play. Thermal is able to cut through all of that stuff and becomes an excellent backup sensor in the case of emergencies. Think about if there's a deer crossing the road or even a pedestrian, as you can see in this very elaborate and smoky demonstration. So yeah, these are the primary sensors that engineers are currently playing with. LiDAR, radar, cameras, and thermal. And I thought to myself, man, it would be great to see a vehicle that had all of these sensors. And then I remembered I'm at CES and I can just walk 100 feet this way to find Zooks. 
a fully autonomous robo-taxi that uses all of the sensors that we talked about. Hi, my name is Cheyenne and I'm with Zoops. We have created this fully autonomous robo-taxi behind me. We built it from the ground up with dense urban environments in mind, getting people from point A to point B in ways they've never been before. Up above, we have LiDAR radar, short range and long range. We also have cameras and then we have sensors that we're able to determine if an object has heat or not. Has heat. Yes. Thermal. Thermal. So on this vehicle, apparently there are 44 sensors. It's got LiDAR, radar, cameras, thermal, and even microphones to detect whether there are sirens. So in the case of an emergency vehicle, it can begin to prepare to move over without even seeing it. Really cool vehicle. They had this display where I was able to read up on the tech behind it all. And one word that stood out to me was multimodal, which is this idea of taking multiple types of data sets, which is then combined and used to understand a composition. In the case of autonomous vehicles, it's using different sensors to understand the car's surroundings. Now, the final booth that I stopped by was this, because it's not every day that you come across a fully autonomous race car. So this is the Indy Autonomous Challenge, where several colleges around the United States are given this car, and then the engineering teams at these colleges build out the software for the car, and they all come to Vegas during CES to compete in a race for first place. So this is the AV24. These uh, Mako G cameras, there are six of them, four uh, Luminar uh, LiDARs here. Each one of them has a 120 degree field of vision. And so with the three set up at the front over there, it provides a full 360 degree coverage. Radars, there's one added here at the back, but there's also one over here at the front. Now I've never seen anybody as excited talking about sensors as Brian. It was truly amazing. Now Brian brought up a really great analogy about sensors sensors. Because even though it may seem like the best way to approach autonomy is just to throw a bunch of sensors at the computer and get the most data, you still have to process the data. And sometimes the resulting action might have a conflict. If you think of it like, say, a voting system, if there's only one person, it's very easy to decide what to do. But when there's three of them, weird things can happen. So having more information isn't always better if you don't know what to do with it. And this is one reason why Tesla is going with a purely vision-based system. But yeah, big shout out to everybody I talked to today. It seems like we have the tools available to us to build out the software to make full autonomy work. And now it's up to the engineers to process all of that data with AI and image recognition software, which can probably be its own video. Between actually seeing the sensors in person today to hearing about the advantages and disadvantages, and of course, seeing them on cars and even race cars, I learned a lot about LiDAR today. And for me, as somebody who has put thousands of full self-driving miles with my Tesla, it was truly fascinating to see how engineers are solving the same problem in different ways. What do you guys think? Who is going to win in this race of autonomous vehicles? Consider subscribing for more content around tech. I'll be picking up the Apple Vision Pro very, very soon, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!